Hey again everybody, we're back again with another tutorial. Today I'm going to go over uh, the HOTAS hands-on throttle and stick system as well as some other generic or basic um, system names, acronyms, and different things like that. Um, basically I just want to clarify everything so you can understand it more easily when I go through a system in another tutorial and I give you a button to push or a, on your stick or, or a system name or some weird acronym you'll have a general idea of um, what the heck I'm talking about. So this is sort of a continuation of the cockpit uh, familiarization tutorial but today we're going to focus on just uh, the switches on the stick and throttle and uh, how they work as well as the other uh, system switches um, and acronyms, names for systems and stuff like that. So to start off we'll look at the stick this is the A10 stick. Um, if you have a HOTAS Warthog from Thrustmaster, it's very familiar to you. If not, then um, you'll get an idea from me going over it right now as to where everything is laid out. Um, for the stick, we have several hat switches. We have a pinky switch down there on the bottom. Obviously the trigger. And we've got the bomb release button here on the top, the red button. Um, and I'm going to explain to you what each of these is called and what they do. So if you're setting up a control uh, layout, you'll be able to understand because they're referred to by their switch names in the uh, control options menu. So it gets kind of confusing in there too. So to start, we'll start with the most obvious uh, weapons release button and the trigger. Um, the trigger is a two-stage trigger. I think if I pull the trigger, you can see it. Click, yeah. So it's a two-stage trigger. So the first stage, and then there's a second stage. And the first stage is going to be um, for it's it's obviously used for firing the gun. And uh, the first stage engages the pack, which is the aircraft stabilization system. Um, and basically, what that does is it dampens down all the control inputs. So when you are getting ready to fire the gun and you're aiming the aircraft. Because remember, this gun is in the nose of this aircraft, and to aim the gun, you aim the aircraft. Um, when you're aiming the aircraft, and you're on your final attack run, you pull that half tri that first detent, half pull on the trigger for the first click, and it uh, stabilizes the aircraft, makes it very hard to um, you know, jerk the aircraft around wildly, and then you just adjust your aim from there, and then pull the trigger to the second detent, click, click, and you fire the gun. So that's your trigger, that's how it works. Um, the weapons release button is pretty standard. Um, it's just a press and hold or press depending on how you're using it. Um, if you're dropping bombs like a dive bomber which is usually in CCIP mode, um, constant computed impact point, which basically gives you a target pipper on your HUD that you put over the target and press the weapons release button to release the bomb. Um, it's a momentary press but push button, so you just click and boom, the bomb comes off. Uh, when you're in firing things like Mavericks or firing things like uh, dropping things like laser guided bombs and such, uh, the functionality is a little bit different in that a lot of times you'll have to hold it for over a second or um, hold it as a drop cue. Uh, counts down on your HUD or something like that. Um, but that's your weapons release button. It's used to release all uh, underwing stores, um, fire missiles, fire rockets, drop bombs, and everything. To the right of that, we have a big hat switch with labels on it. This is our trim switch. This is how we trim the aircraft. You'll notice as I am pushing the buttons, the stick moves a little bit as well. Um, and this that's just giving automatic stick input basically to uh, to the aircraft so say you're you've just shot two Mavericks off of one wing you're totally unbalanced now and you're rolling heavily to the right because your left wing is much lighter you can add a bunch of clicks left left wing down trim and it'll balance your aircraft out and just a side note trim is excessively important in this aircraft because it doesn't have automatic or electronic flight control system 
um, it is dependent on the pilot to trim it out uh, and keep it level. So you, you make sure you have, if you're flying with a stick, if you have the space to put it on your stick, s stick a hat switch as trim. Um, if not, make sure you have it somewhere on the keyboard that you can easily access because it, it makes flying so much easier. Especially when you're doing things like aerial refueling or uh, uh, formation flying when you need that extra degree of control. Alright, so moving on. We have three more hat switches on this stick. Um, the first hat switch we'll go with is just below the weapons release button. This is the TMS hat switch, or Target Management System. Now each of these hat switches have an acronym, and they each do different things. And what they do is dependent on what system you currently have active in uh, the aircraft. So I'm not going to go over all the functionality right now because it changes. But they do understand that they each have a general uh, functionality kind of across all uh, systems and that's why they're named the way they are. So we have the TMS which is again target management system or target management switch excuse me and so that's gonna allow you to basically manage your targets for lack of a better word. Um, in other aircraft a TMS would use um, you would use it to target things on radar and um, other ways to set your particular target that you want to attack or use as a reference point. In this, since the A-10 doesn't have a radar, we use it with our other sensors to set reference points and mark points and other things that will aid us in targeting um, the targeting, you know, either the vehicles on the ground or a point somewhere in space that we need to use as a reference. Um, so that's the TMS and it has a four-way hat switch, left, right, up, and down. And again, I'm not going to go over the whole functionality of that. That will I that will I'll go over in uh, you know individual weapons tutorials and such. But know that the TMS is there and it controls most of your targeting and marking functions. The different systems. Moving over to the other switch, this is our DMS. Um, or data management switch. This controls a various uh, different aspects. Again, it's very context sensitive, so um, depending on which system you have active, it's going to do different things. But for the most part, it, um, it again manages our data. That's why it's called a data management switch. So this is, allows us to cycle through different data in different screens. Um, it's our main easy way of changing waypoints with uh, DMS up and down. See our displays are changing over here. On the right hand side you'll see my steer points changing. On the right MFD. Um, but again, there's other things that it can do. Uh, but it is our main interface with uh, cycling through data modes um, and other things on uh, the aircraft. And that again is a four-way switch up, down, left, right. They all have different functionalities. So that's DMS. We have another hat switch down here on the bottom or the on the side of the throttle I should say. That's our CMS switch. Um, for countermeasure management system. And obviously that's going to control our countermeasures. This is a pretty solid switch. It does the same thing all the time. It's got four ways, left, right, up, down, and it also has a Z-axis, like a push button. Um, and I'll really quickly go through the functionality of this because it does the same thing. Um, the way the CMS works is you have different programs, different countermeasures programs, uh, loaded in the aircraft. And you can cycle through those programs with left and right. So program A, program B, program C, go back the other way, blah blah blah. And here we'll turn on the countermeasure system to show you. Everything turned on here, let it warm up. 
and you see we're in countermeasures A right now and if I CMS left a couple of times you see we'll have gone around the horn to X Y this is CMS right I'm trying to get so you can see the stick and the screen so we're going CMS right and it changes yeah so you get the idea um, CMS left and right changes the current um, cha uh, countermeasures program CMS up and down start and stop the program respectively I'm not going to do it while we're on the ground but CMS up or CMS forward starts the program so you'll start running whatever CMS program you have selected and ch chaff and or flares will start coming out of your aircraft and then CMS back will uh, stop the program and then the last thing on that switch is the push button Z axis does that that will turn on and turn off your jammer uh, so if you have an, an electronics countermeasures jammer equipped which I think we do on this aircraft nope we do not it will turn it on and off last button on the stick is the pinky button down there on the bottom clicky clicky so the pinky button has a couple different functionalities uh, on the ground it acts as your uh, nose wheel steering toggle so you click the button once and it'll turn on or off your steering nose wheel steering you'll see the nose wheel steering indication turn on and off as I click the button and um, that's that's its functionality on the ground once you are in the air and your wheels are up it has uh, secondary two secondary functionalities in the air uh, with when you're using the targeting pod it will fire either your targeting laser or your IR pointer from your targeting pod um, whatever you have selected uh, that'll I'll go through in another tutorial obviously um, and then the other functionality that the pinky switch has is during aerial refueling operations um, if we have our refueling door open not sure if this will do it on the ground or not yeah so you'll see up here we have a ready indication on the right of our HUD uh, indicating to us that our refueling do, uh, receptacle is ready now if you're doing aerial refueling and you disconnect from your tanker aircraft uh, that will drop that will drop the ready indication and it will show disconnect and we'll use the pinky switch to reset the receptacle um, otherwise the uh, most aircraft cannot reconnect to the receiver. So, um, again, pinky switch on the ground controls your nose wheel steering. In the air, controls your laser or your refueling receptacle. That covers the stick portion of our hands on throttle and stick tutorial. Now we're going to move over to the throttle. Now, the throttle is an altogether different beast. It has quite a few buttons and switches. It's also a two-part throttle so we'll go one section at a time um, the right hand section has the most functionality on it um, it's also your control for your right engine um, the right hand control is going to have two hat switches three uh, multi-position switches on the side as well as a mini stick um, just to the left on the front of the stick and I'll go through all of those now so starting from the bottom you can see the big red switch down on the bottom that is a two position momentary toggle switch called the china hat switch and the china hat switch is going to have different functionalities very much like the hat switches on the joystick um, it's going to have different functionalities based on the system uh, what you're using whether it's your targeting pod or your tad or the maverick or something like that but what you use China Hat for mostly is either changing field of view in uh, different video systems or manipulating your sensors and telling them what to look at. Uh, there's a couple other um, little bits of functionality in there, but those will be covered in uh, individual systems tutorials. Um, the next switch above that is called the boat switch in that I suppose it's shaped like a little bit like a boat and it is actually not doing anything for me right now for some reason but it is a three position toggle 
and it controls, for the most part, your uh, FLIR uh, modes. So you can change between uh, charge coupler display, like a television display, or the two black hot or white hot FLIR modes. Um, so that's basically the only functionality that Switch has. If I'm forgetting one, somebody tell me. It's really the only thing I use it for. Above that, we have the speed brake switch, which is a three position switch. Um, it's a little un unique in that on the actual aircraft, it's a momentary switch when pulled to the aft position. So that's press, press, and release, and it pops back to center. That extends and retracts your speed brakes. So aft will extend the speed brakes. As you can see, they're extended now. And forward is a latched switch. So I can just click it forward, and it'll stay forward. And you'll see that the speed brakes are retracting. And then we can pop back to the center position and be ready to deploy speed brakes again. So that's aft. And that's forward. And partially deploy them or whatever we want to do. But that's your speed brake switch. Um, to the next switch above that, on the side of the throttle there, is the mic switch and you won't usually be using this unless you have a lot of hat switches or you're running the, uh, the again the Thrustmaster Hotess Warthog. Um, it's basically to control your microphone in the aircraft and key your microphone for the different radios like the VHF or the UHF or the uh, VHF FM radio. Um, in this particular sim it's not really implemented you can set it. I have it set to pull up my individual radios so I can grab my radio options easily. Um, the other thing you can use it for is TARS, which is a modification to allow you like uh, simulated radio uh, communications in conjunction with TeamSpeak, and you can use it to trigger your radios. But again, that doesn't really have too much functionality in the sim other than triggering your various radios. Uh, on the front of the right hand side of the throttle we have another hat switch. This is called the Cooley switch. Uh, this is how you change your sensor of interest or whatever sensor you have active at this time. So remember how I was saying that your DMS and your TMS switches have different functionalities based on which sensor you have active. Uh, the Cooley switch on the throttle is how you switch between those sensors. So it's just another four-way hat switch, and this switch will be covered in um, the sensor of interest tutorial that I will do. Um, you can see that it does some quick functionality here. You can, um, uh, uh, other than changing the sensor of interest, you can use it to cycle through the different pages on your MFDs. Um, so short presses to the right will change your right MFD page. You'll see it cycles through the bottom of the page. So it's the same as clicking the uh, buttons on the bottom of the MFD. And to the left, we'll cycle through the left-hand MFD pages. And then Cooley Hat down, we'll swap the MFDs from side to side. Um, so that's basically the functionality of the Cooley switch. Um, the, the last and final thing we have on our throttle is going to be the mini stick. Um, the mini stick is used to control a uh, slew or to slew the uh, the camera on the uh, targeting pod around. Fortunately, I don't have that turned on right now, so I can't really show you. But it's also used to slew your other sensors as well. Um, for example, your TDC or tar target designation cursor on your HUD, you see that little box moving around. I can slew that around anywhere and that's used for targeting. So we'll use this much, very much in conjunction with the target management switch or TMS. And you'll also see if I set the TAD as active, I can slew a little cursor around too. And again, in conjunction with target management switch, I can select different things or deselect different things on the TAD. Uh, again, th that will be covered more in individual systems tutorials. But the basic idea is if you have something that can be slewed around, 
um, the mini stick on the throttle is how you do it. Um, now switching to the left side throttle, or left engine throttle, there's only two things to do on here. There's a big red button, that's the uh, left throttle button, that toggles on and off are currently active autopilot mode. So it's just a quick way to punch autopilot on. And then on the outboard, which I don't think I can get my head over far enough to look, oh, you can just barely see it there. Moving around on the outboard side of the throttle, there's a three position toggle switch called the pinky switch. That is controlling our lights. So center position is off, forward is flashed, I believe. And rearward is forward is solid, and rearward is flash. Or am I incorrect? We have to have our lights set up the same way. Okay, the way it works is forward position is on solid center position is off, and rear position is panel settings. So whatever we have, whoops, whatever we have set on the panel settings for our position flash lights, um, if we have the switch in the rearward position on the throttle, it will reflect this setting. So right now we have them set on flash. I have the pinky switch in the rearward position. You can see they're flashing. Now if I set them on Trek car is going crazy. Now if I set the position flashers on, hang on, something going on here. Alright, that's better. So if I set, set, set the position lights on steady, and put the switch in the rear position again, you'll see that they are steady. And I can put it in the forward position there steady, because they are always steady in the forward position. So, the aft position on the pinky switch is uh, reflecting of the switch position on your console. So just remember that. Uh, and that pretty much covers the basic HOTAS terminology. Um, the biggest things that you're going to have to remember is Cooley Hat Switch, um, your three management switches, TMS, Target Management, Data Management, DMS, and Countermeasures Management is CMS as well as your switches on the side of your throttle, boat switch, and the china hat switch. Um, so hopefully that demystifies a little bit of what each switch does. Um, I didn't really go into a lot of detail. Like I said, I'll do that um, in individual tutorials. But uh, at least now you know where they are and kind of what they do. So you have a general understanding when I go, you know, press DMS left to cycle through your weapons hard points. Um, you'll know what, what I'm talking about. So that's DMS left. You can see we're cycling through our weapons hard points on the HUD. Or weapons profiles, excuse me. And then DMS up and down, cycling through our steer points. Pretty, pretty sophisticated piece of machinery. Um, again, the whole idea for hands on throttle and stick is to keep your hands on the throttle and stick so you don't have to be dancing around the cockpit pushing a bunch of buttons and, and switches. Um, most of the uh, important aircraft systems can be operated from the stick and throttle. So, again, um, hopefully that cleared up any future confusions we might have. While I'm trying to teach you uh, different systems, now you'll know what I'm talking about with all these acronyms. Uh, again, if you have any questions or if I was unclear at any time, please comment and ask me questions. I'll try to answer them the best I can. Um, if you like the video, subscribe um, to the channel because I'll have more tutorials coming out shortly. Again, uh, this is a rehash of all my old videos. I'm putting them together into one continuous string. so. It'll be a little bit more cohesive and you can start from you know step one and go through and understand everything in order um, so that's that and um, we'll close out this video one last time like comment subscribe 
tell me what you think. I'd love to hear from you guys. And I will be back with another tutorial uh, in the near future. So until then, I'll see ya.